Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with a brief video for YouTube subscribers and Twitter followers that I do every couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to take a look at a market, one that everybody's interested in, the S&P. And not only are we going to take a look at the current position and potential trade setups uh, coming up here in the next few days or maybe a week or so, but I'm going to make it into a little bit of a lesson about Elliott Wave. Real simple stuff about Elliott Wave, but how it can be really helpful to identify the position of the market and the probable outcome of the market. If you like what you learn here today, uh, check out uh, dynamictraders.com or Traders News. You can sign up for that, and it's absolutely free. We don't require any charge card, just your email address so we can notify you when we put up other uh, trade alerts that are uh, free for our traders news subscribers. Okay, that said, let's get started. Take a look at the S&P. This is the ES uh, September contract. It's the daily data. There's a couple of really important pieces of information uh, on this chart related primarily to the pattern position. So we use a very simplified Elliott wave pattern position to help identify if a market's in a trend or a counter trend, and if it's in a position to complete that trend or counter trend. And if we can identify that pattern, it's not always clear, but when it is, then we can frequently identify what is the probable outcome. Let's take a look off of this July high, the decline into the August 18th low. This is what we call a five-wave impulse pattern. It meets all the criteria, guidelines of being an impulse pattern. What's important about that is that if this is an impulse pattern, it then I, uh, it cannot complete a correction. Correction cannot be complete in the August 18th low. And it should be uh, one section of a higher time frame bear trend. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, the apocalypse bear trend. I'm just talking about a typical bear trend that can last a few weeks, uh, that type of thing. But this cannot be the completed correction. It indicates the higher time frame trend is bearish. And what does that mean? Well, that would mean that following a correction, then a bear trend should continue to below the August low. So we can label this a wave A. And the advance from that low just looks like a textbook ABC correction. If that's the case, and I've got a question mark because it hasn't been confirmed that that's the case, but if it is the case, when a correction is complete, which fo what follows, and that would be a resumption of the trend prior to, to the correction to a new extreme, meaning that eventually the S&P is likely to trade below the August 18th low, and that the September 1st high, as I had in our DT report a week or so ago, is the September 1st high was in a position to complete an ABC correction and uh, then continue the bear trend. And that's exactly what it's done so far. Now let me show you a couple pieces of information. You can write these down because they'll be important in the days ahead. Should the S&P close below 44.47? Now that's the ES September contract. It's the August 23rd close. And that's the high close of what I got labeled as a wave A. Should the ES close below 44.47, it confirms that this indeed is a correction and that the correction is probably complete. And eventually, the ES will continue to decline below the August low. Now, it's not a forecast that it's going to close below it, simply that if it does, that's what it means. Uh, let's take a look down here. This is the uh, daily momentum cycle. It's reached oversold, and this data, of course, is as of Friday the 9th, but it's uh, oversold. That warns that a daily low is uh, near, probably within a day or two, if it's not already complete. We can see last Thursday how the ES came down and just tagged the 62% retracement. That may be important. Um, we'll see. Let's take a look at the 240-minute data. So coming off of what I had labeled as that wave B high from the September 1st high, what's the pattern here? Well, it's real simple. You don't need to get complicated. You don't need to get your textbooks out. This is an impulsive pattern. It's that simple. And that's exactly what should follow the end of a correction, if indeed the September 1st completed that little ABC up to a higher time frame wave B. 
and then resume the weekly bear trend. That's exactly what we'd anticipate. Now, as of last Thursday, once again, reached the 62% retracement. Has it completed the initial decline? Probably. The daily momentum's got oversold, but it might not. Might have another day or two to go. So there is that dreaded alternate wave count that we have. The beauty of this is, and with Elliott Wave, at least at this particular position of the market, is either wave count represents basically the same thing, a higher time frame bear trend. Higher time frame meaning just weekly. So if we count from the September 1st tie, one, two, three, four, five, that would mean the initial five wave decline, that would be a higher time frame wave one was complete, and there'd be a correction over two or three days. And let me just expand the date a little bit here, because I can tell you when that correction should be complete. Uh, that would be on Tuesday the 12th. That's the 62% time retracement of this decline. Now, there is a possibility that if this decline is, immediate decline is not complete. And so an alternate wave count would be 1, 2, and then 3 on Thursday, little A, B, C into Friday. That would indicate Monday or Tuesday there would be a new low. But either way, what this market is telling us, based on the pattern position at least, is that as of September 1st, a correction was complete, and the trend would likely be net bearish uh, for the next two to three weeks anyway, and eventually continue to below the August low. So you can develop very specific trade strategies from that information. Uh, what would void that outlook? Well, just a trade above last uh, week ago Friday's high. That's the September 1st high. That would void that outcome and say something completely different is going on. So we have a specific trade strategy. What I'm looking for in the days ahead is uh, another two to three days of correction. We'll go back to a 40, 240 minute data. Even if the S&P makes a new low earlier in that week, then we'll be looking for a correction and to identify the end of that correction for a resumption of the bear trend to a new low. Uh, so we're looking for a correction because we want to position ourselves on the side of the market of the major trend. And that, as of now, looks like bearish and eventually to below the August low. So you don't have to trade uh, the S&P futures contracts or options or whatever. But uh, there's ETFs, bear market ETFs. That's what I use for most of my trades. I do futures trading. But uh, in retirement account and uh, just personal accounts is bull and bear ETFs work really well on all this type of analysis and trade strategies. Well, that's it for today, my friends. Be sure and subscribe if you want to be alerted to other updates that we have. And if you like what you learn, pass it on. Tell other people about it. Remember, everything you learn and everything that you learn in any one of these videos, you can use for any actively traded market in any time frame. That's it for today. Robert Miner, over and out. Everybody, take care. Be healthy. Have some fun. See you next time.